Now, Mystery Theater. court of the mysterious and the macabre. The act of trust seems to get short shrift from the poets, uh, the philosophers, and even the prophets. An early American sage warns us to trust everybody but cut the cards. The book tells us, put not your trust in princes. Very well and very good, but you have to trust somebody. Can anyone go all the way through this life without trusting another human being. What is it you want me to do? Show me how to use this. That's a revolver. Exactly. Where did you get it? I don't think that's important. Well, I don't think I should help you to... Well, if you don't, I'll probably kill myself trying to figure it out. But you don't need a revolver. I, I feel safer with it in the house. Ted is away so much. Well, you, uh, you flick out the cylinder. Mm-hmm. And you insert the shells into these chambers. I see. And now you flick back the cylinder, and I hope you never have to use it. But the gun is ready to fire. You just point it and pull the trigger. Like uh, so? Like so. Uh, but not at me. Why not at you? Myra. I intend to kill you. <laughs> mystery drama, Can You Trust Your Husband, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Joan Lovejoy and Mandel Kramer. Somehow, love seems to have become the province of the young. Ask almost anyone to name two people who are deeply in love, and the answer almost automatically is Romeo and Juliet. Well, let's face it. Romeo and Juliet were a couple of teenagers who only knew each other for a brief interval. They conveniently died before they would have to weather the storms of marriage and responsibility. The lovers of record should be Philemon and Baucis, or Darby and Joan, couples who lived with each other and put up with each other for 50 and 60 years. That, dear friends, is love. All this is by way of introduction to the Mallards, Ted and Myra, married 25 years. And as far as we know, there's never been an argument or even a harsh word. It's all been one long, beautiful honeymoon, as far as we know. Let our story begin late one autumn evening as the doorbell rings in their comfortable, well-appointed apartment. Just a minute. You'll have to wait, Ted. Next time, carry your keys. Oh, Bert. Did I wake you, Myra? No, no. I, I never can sleep while Ted's awake. Come on in. Uh, thanks. Ted isn't home yet. I uh, guess his plane was late. Why, yes, it was. Oh, I, I knew it. But... <sighs> but what? Well, I, I... Well, I... Something's wrong. Well, Bert, what are you trying to tell me? Well, whatever it is, I guess I'm not doing a very good job of it. It's Ted. Yes, it, it's about Ted. Something's happened to him. The, the, the plane. Oh, now, Myra, just a minute. I, I, I've been listening to the radio all night. I haven't heard anything about a plane. No, it, it isn't the plane. Then what is it? The plane landed more than three hours ago. Bert, tell me what's happened to Ted. Well, I, I'm trying to. It, it's not easy. Do you know where he is? He's in jail. Jail? Why? What for? Well, I, I said it's not easy. I... I, I'm not sure. He, he was arrested as he came through customs. Well, tell me why. Well, I, I suppose for smuggling. Smuggling? Oh, <laughs> that's impossible. It, it has to be a mistake. Oh, I'm sure of it. Oh, we have to get hold of Arthur Clemens. I already did. Or doesn't he practice that kind of law? He'll get someone else if he can't handle it. Handle what? Well, all I know is Ted called me, and they allowed them one phone call. Please, Bert, get to it. Well, he said, Bert, I'm being accused of smuggling. Call Arthur, and then tell Myra. But what is he accused of smuggling? Heroin or cocaine. I, I'm not sure. But that 
That's ridiculous. How, how could Ted possibly be involved in anything like that? They found it in, in his attache case. But it's all a mistake, a, a terrible mistake. Or else it, it's a joke. A very bad joke. <laughs> Ted, oh, Myra, darling. Myra, I didn't want you to come here. Why not? Because it's a prison cell. Are you all right? I don't know. I'm in prison, Myra. Well, it, it's not exactly prison. You're, you're just being held here because of some awful misunderstanding. Oh, darling, it's prison. People like me, like us, we only read about these things. But Arthur says he, he'll go before a judge in the morning and, and, and see about setting bail. Well, that's another word. Bail. Do you realize I'm going to be out on bail as if as if I were some common criminal? Darling, Ted, tell me what happened. I, I simply couldn't get a word out of Bert. What happened? How many times have I done this? I got off the plane, picked up my luggage, walked through customs, except... Except? Except this time I didn't walk through. This time, when they searched my attaché case, they found a packet, they say, of first-grade cocaine. Well, then it's... It... Couldn't have been your attaché case. But it was. Well, how, how did the cocaine get there? I don't know. Couldn't you have seen it? No. Why not? Because it was concealed in a secret compartment. What secret compartment? I don't know, darling. I didn't know I had one. But surely... Surely what? Surely nothing, darling. I know how upset you are. You don't need me giving you a third degree. They were waiting for me, Myra. Waiting? Yes. Ordinarily, customs is just a routine. This time, there were three or four of them out there. They emptied the papers out of my case. One of them had some kind of a screwdriver, and he... You mean that they actually expected to find something? Yes. And then there was this, this cellophane, or they, I think they call it glassine, a packet just filled with powder. Well, it's a mistake. Well, of course. Obviously, it, it, it couldn't have been your attaché case. You see, that that's the answer. Myra, I told you it was. Ted, you, you're being framed. That's the only thing that makes any sense. But why? Because I travel regularly between New York and London on legitimate business. I'd make an ideal courier. Somebody's been using you. People, a, a gang that's involved in smuggling, that they watch for regular travelers. I know it sounds crazy, but they managed to get hold of your bag somehow. I don't know what's going to happen now, Myra. Well, I know what's going to happen. Tomorrow... The mistake, or whatever it is, will be straightened out. I don't know if it ever can be straightened out completely. Ted, what are you saying? You're innocent. Am I innocent? You know it, and I know it, but what about the rest of the world? Don't forget this will be in all the papers. But it's so obviously a frame-up. To whom? Myra, there are people who actually believe that if a person isn't guilty, he'd never have been arrested in the first place. Ted, that's crazy. Of course it is, but that's what's out there. But everyone knows that you're an honest, hard-working, ethical man. In the minds man. of so many people, there will be a nagging little nasty suspicion. Could he really have been involved? <sighs> well, this is going to be a good way of finding out who your friends really are. Suddenly I feel as if I'm part of another world, Myra. A world you and I never knew. It's, it's no longer our logical, well-ordered universe. All of a sudden, I'm a criminal. Darling, you're not. I'm in a cage, deprived of my freedom. Look at them, the rest of them, as you leave here. The thugs, the hoodlums, the thieves. I'm one of them. Ted. Look at them as you leave, because I can't leave. I have to stay. Darling, not for long. Myra, you've got to get me out. The shame of this. The disgrace. I can't stand it. <laughs> Hello? Myra. Bert, where are you? Courthouse. Was Arthur able to get bail set? Well, that's what I'm calling you. Bert, please, just tell me. There's a problem, Myra, and Arthur's going to be tied up with it, so he asked me to call you. Bert, will you please tell me? Well, it, it looks like Arthur can't get bail. What do you mean, he can't get bail? Well, he... It's the law. A person is entitled to bail. He is, and he isn't. Well, I'm going right down there. Uh, Myra, it won't do you any good. You see, because of the size of the package and the fact that they've had their eye on Ted for a long now, time. Now, you just stop there. You stop right there. Please, Myra. I'm only reporting the facts. The federal prosecutor moved for suspension of bail. But that's not legal. Well, in some cases. 
Well, there has to be someone I can talk to. They claim Ted is so important to this narcotics ring... What narcotics he, ring? That, ...that he would simply jump bail and leave the country. Bert, do you know what you're saying? Or else his life would be in danger. So what this amounts to is, is protective custody. Huh. And Arthur... Our fine attorney, Arthur, to whom we pay a fortune every year as a retainer, is just standing there and taking it. Now, Myra, you must be fair to Arthur. Be fair to Arthur? Arthur's fighting it. He's filing an appeal. He's going to a higher court, but it has to take time. Time? Well, a, a couple of days, a week. Oh, Bert, I, I have to hang up now. Now, you just relax, Myra. Everyone's doing their absolute best. I'll talk to you soon. Okay, goodbye. Uh, all right. Yes? Mrs. Mallard? Who are you? I'm Lieutenant Jack Denson of the Narcotics Squad. We're cooperating with the federal authorities. And? Here are my credentials. I see them. May I come in? Why? To discuss your husband's case. My husband doesn't have a case. He's a victim of a, of a frame-up, of, of some sort of ghastly mistake. There's nothing you can gain from talking to me. I'm here to help you, Mrs. Mallard. Help you and your husband. Help us in what way? Well, I'd rather not discuss that in the hallway of your apartment building. Very well, come in. The only way you can help us is to clear up this terrible mistake and get Ted out of that jail. What makes you think it's a mistake? What makes it... My husband is innocent. What makes you think so? I'm going to have to ask you to leave this house. Well, first, answer my question. What makes you think your husband is innocent? The fact that you love him? Of course I love him. Has that become a crime? Your entire attitude toward your husband is based on the fact that you love him. And love happens to be blind. Please, spare me your dime store philosophy. You don't live with a man for 25 years without getting to know him. Ours was no ordinary marriage, or, or maybe it was. Maybe all marriages are the same. I wouldn't know. But we were together in everything. We had no secrets. I don't believe we even had separate thoughts. We lived with and for each other. So he couldn't have been doing anything wrong. Because I would have known it. How would you have known it? Evidently, you're not married. Or if you are, it's not what I would call a marriage. I would know. He wouldn't have to say a word or leave a clue. But I would know if he were doing anything wrong. So what do you say to that? I wish I knew what to say, Mrs. Mallard. I wish I knew how to say what I have to say. Then please, stop beating around the bush. You're a fine woman, Mrs. Mallard. I'm in no mood for flattery, Lieutenant. Say what you have to say and get out. I'm sorry I'm forced to tell you this. But your husband, whom you love, and with whom you're so close, has been leading a double life. I don't believe that. It, it can't be true. I'm sorry, Mrs. Mallard. We have proof. There are parts of the world where it never rains. The bright golden sun shines in a deep blue sky. And all is beautiful and cheerful and gay. And after a while, you accept it as something that will last forever. But as the song says, into each life some rain must fall. And when it does, those who have never known what it is to be drenched usually suffer the most. I shall return shortly with Act Two. To the Mystery Theater on WABC. For 25 years, Myra and Ted Mallard have had a wonderful marriage. Myra and Ted could communicate without speaking, read each other's thoughts, share each other's feelings. Well, uh, possibly this hasn't been completely so. For here is Myra being confronted with the charge that Ted has been living a complete life away from her, a life that is of interest to the police. I... I challenge you to present your proof, Lieutenant. 
We've been watching Ted for a long time. He makes regular trips. He makes regular trips to London on legitimate business. Of course. Ted had an opportunity to open a branch office in London. And he goes there to supervise. And it's an excellent cover. Cover? His presence is necessary. According to the annual report of your husband's company, that London operation is losing money. Ted has faith in it. But you can excuse our being skeptical. And what right do you have to arrest a man on skepticism? None at all. But it goes deeper. I'm not interested. I can see the nature of your so-called proof. I want you to help your husband. Why should you care? By helping him, you help us. Mrs. Mallard, he won't talk. What does he have to talk about? Everything. Who his associates are. Where they buy the drugs. Where and to whom they sell. Who is protecting them. But... Please, I... let me finish. You must convince him to talk. If he remains silent, he'll spend the rest of his life in jail. But he hasn't done anything. Please, Mrs. Mallard. We're beyond all that. Now, you must convince him to cooperate. That way he can get a substantial reduction in his sentence. What sentence? He'll be tried and he'll be sentenced. We have proof. You keep saying you have proof. And all you've got is the packet you found in his attache case, and that could have been planted there. It could have been, but it wasn't. Well, I won't be intimidated. If we have to fight, we'll fight. Ted is 47 years old. He has a spotless reputation. He's never done anything wrong. The jury will simply refuse to believe that he could be a member of a dope ring. <sighs> Did you ever hear of a woman named Jenny Saunders? Jenny Saunders. I don't believe so. I'll do some things that are not exactly in the book. If you promise to say nothing, I'll take you to her apartment. Well, why would I want to go there? Because the two of you have something in common. How does it happen that you have a key to this woman's apartment? Well, you see, she's cooperating with us. And uh, when I said I might want to bring you here, she felt it best not to be present. Why? Out of respect, I suppose, for your feelings. What do you think of the place? Well, it, it's nice enough, but why have you... Wait a minute. That... That's Ted's picture. Yep. That's Ted's picture. What's Ted's picture doing here? You'll find some of Ted's clothing in the closet also. Oh. Oh, no. Oh, no what? You won't get away with this. I see what this is for. It's a frame-up to build your case. You're planting his things in this apartment. You're making serious charges, Mrs. Mallard, and I can understand how you feel, but Ted was here. He spent time here. I defy you to prove that. We have witnesses. People have seen him here. Well, they can. They, they, they can all be part of this plot. Which plot? Mrs. Mallard, why should we want to frame your husband? I don't know. To make an arrest? To create an impression you're cracking down on drugs? Why pick on Ted Mallard? Why construct this elaborate framework? I won't believe it. That means you refuse to believe it. Uh, Mrs. Mallard, let's accept your argument for a moment. The drugs could have been planted in the attaché case. Then you admit... For the sake of argument. Okay. Then we could have gone to the trouble of setting up the apartment, the witness, the girl. But you tell me one thing. How do you explain your husband's fingerprints? What fingerprints? His fingerprints are all over the place. I, I know it's very hard for you, Mrs. Mallard... I suppose you have to look at your whole life now from from another perspective. And maybe, faced with all this, you won't even want to help him. Please. Let me out of here. Myra, where were you? I thought you'd be here earlier. Arthur hasn't been able to do a thing. Now, should we get another lawyer? I can't believe a thing like this could Ted, happen. Ted, tell me about Jenny Saunders. Who? Jenny Saunders. Jenny? What about 
What about Jenny Saunders? That's what I'm asking you. I don't know any Jenny Saunders. You don't? No, of course not. Look, darling, we've got a million and one important things to worry about. You don't know a Jenny Saunders. Myra, is somebody named Jenny Saunders somehow involved in everything that's happening? There's an apartment at 291 Fenimore Place. So, what about it? I was hoping you'd tell me what about it. Myra, what's wrong? Don't say nothing, because I can tell when something's bothering you. I didn't say nothing was wrong. Tell me about 291 Fenimore Place. I never heard of it. The police say they found your fingerprints all over it. My... Oh, well, I guess they would. Then you do know about 291 Fenimore. I wasn't thinking, darling. I have been there. Let me see. Often? Well, twice. Twice. To install and then... I want to see, was it three times? Anyway, I installed and then went back for some repairs, I guess. And I guess the police were checking every place that I ever visited. Well, why would you have been to 291 Fenimore? As a favor to Bert. Bert? Yes, he's got a friend. Jenny Saunders? I don't... Maybe that's her name. I never saw her. I never saw anyone in the apartment. Well, why did you go there in the first place? I'm telling you, darling. Bert asked me to install one of our special stereos for this good friend of his. You? Don't you have servicemen and technicians there to do that kind of thing? There were some new things, and Bert said that it would be a big favor. And that's the only reason you ever went to 291 Fenimore Place? Well, of course. What other reason would I have? Oh, hello, Mrs. Mallard. Hello, Harriet. Is, is Bert Hollis in? Well, yeah, he sure is, but he, he's on the phone. That's all right. I'll wait. Um, I... Uh... Look, I don't believe it about Mr. Mallard. I mean, what, well, he's just about the straightest guy there is. Harriet, tell me something. Does the name Jenny Saunders mean anything to you? Uh, uh, say it again, Mrs. Mallard. Jenny Saunders. Does it mean anything? Um, yeah. What? Well, I, I, I don't know. I mean... Oh, gosh. Well, who is it? <laughs> Look, does this ever happen to you? You know you've heard something somewhere, but... You can't for the life of you remember when or where. Now, now this name, Jenny Saunders. Yes? I did hear it. Apropos of what? Apropos of I can't remember. Oh, please, Harriet, try to recall. No, 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 it doesn't do me any good to it's try. It's very important. But, I mean, it, it's, it's all just sloshing around somewhere in my subconscious, and it'll come to the surface when it wants to. <sighs> well, you... You will let me know, won't you, if, if you should happen to remember. Oh, Sure. Oh, Mr. Hollis's light is out now, so he's off the phone. Why, why don't you just go in? Thank you. Bert. Myra, come in. Come in. Sit down. Thank you. Is there something new? I know Arthur's still waiting for the Court of Appeal. Bert, who is Jenny Saunders? Well, I, I'd never heard of her. Now, look, I know how long you and Ted have been friends. And, of course, your, your instinct is to protect him, but Bert... Oh, Bert, I have to know. What do you have to know? If my husband has been... has been having an affair with a woman named Jenny Saunders... Ted? An affair? Oh, no, never. It's impossible. Bert, I... I looked in the mirror today. And I see that it could be possible. Myra, I know Ted, Please and I say to never. Me. Please When I think of Ted and me and our marriage... I believe I'm still 20, and he's still 22. But I'm not, and he's not, and I have wrinkles, and a girl named Jenny Saunders is probably quite young. And you're being quite silly. Ted would never... Are you familiar with an apartment at 291 Fenimore Place? 291 Fenimore... No, no, no. Should I be? Yes, if you have a friend who lives there. No, I don't know anyone who... Well, since... You have never heard of the place, and you don't know anyone who lives there. Then you couldn't possibly have asked Ted to personally install a special super stereo. Ask Ted to what? You heard what I said. Well, I heard it, but I can't believe it. Why, why would I ask Ted? I see. Myra, Myra, please. Why did you ask me such a question? What are you driving at? What's happened? I'm not sure. When Ted was arrested at the airport the other night, I thought that was the end of the world. Now I see that that may have just been the 
calm before the storm. Yes? You're Jenny Saunders. <laughs> okay. Where do we go from here? I'm Myra Mallard. Oh, well, come on in. Sit down. Thank you. Drink? I don't believe so. <laughs> well, what, what are we going to talk about? Is it true? It's true. I didn't think you'd be his type. <laughs> when they start to hit 50, what's a type? Although you are quite pretty. If it makes you feel any better, he's, uh, he's still in love with you. Really? Then what was he doing here? Well, I guess these fellows need excitement. He's in a jam, I hear. Yes. I will say he was fast with a dollar. He was good to me. The rent here goes for almost 300 And then he uh, liked to go to the track. I never knew he had the slightest interest in... Oh, and he liked a game of cards. <laughs> I told him the stakes were a little high. I never knew he could even play cards. Well, I... I tried to steer him clear of it. Thank you. But men, well, they do what they want to do. And so, the way I see it, he got in very deep to the loan sharks. And it's all tied into the rackets, you understand? So they said, uh, look, here's how you can pay us back... And so he became a courier. You see it happen all the time. Legit business guys get themselves in hock and the mob moves in. What are you looking for? Uh, you, uh, you wouldn't happen to have a specially installed stereo, would you? Oh, no. I wish I did. Well, thank you, Miss Saunders. Yeah. I'm glad you're uh, friendly, Mrs. Mallet. A lot of wives, they'd throw a fit. But isn't it better to act civilized? Myra, what are you saying to me? What are you saying to me, Ted? I'm saying that I don't know a girl named Jenny Saunders. She lives at 291 Fenimore Place. You admit you went there. As a favor to Bert. Bert knows nothing about what it. What do you mean he knows nothing about it? He asked me he to. Didn't. He specifically asked me. Myra, Bert came into my office a couple of months ago and asked me to do him this favor. But he didn't. Well, ask him. I did ask him. He knows nothing about it. And furthermore, I just had a visit with Jenny Saunders. Myra. I can see where she might be. Very exciting. Myra, listen to me. No, you listen to me. Call Lieutenant Denson. What for? So you can make a deal and be out of here in a few years. Or maybe even months. Do you mind telling me what you're talking I'm about? I'm talking about a man who fell in love with a woman half his age. Myra. All right. Let's say he became infatuated. And so he went through all of his money, got into debt, and was offered a way out, an illegal way out, and he was caught. Myra, do you believe this? Yes, Ted, I believe it. I don't see how it's possible not to believe it. How is it possible, indeed, not to believe it? How can one doubt the evidence? Evidence based on the reasonable, logical, and sensible interpretation of the facts that exist. Certainly, a man must be proven guilty beyond the shadow of a doubt. Is there even a shadow here? Everything seems so clear-cut. I'll be back shortly with Act Three. Oh, the Mystery Theater returns on WABC. Sometimes, if you repeat a story often enough, you'll come to believe it. For instance, for 25 years, Myra Mallard has been telling herself that she has the perfect marriage. A union that was made in heaven, as they say. And uh, perhaps she has been so taken by the idea that she refuses to accept reality. And reality seems to be another woman. And a prison cell and a narcotics-carrying charge. You're telling me I've been having an affair with another woman? I have met her. And I've been maintaining her? Yes. 
And the drain on my finances has driven me into becoming a member of a narcotics ring? Ted, these are facts. Well, I deny every one of them. But your fingerprints are all over that apartment. And I told you how they got there. Oh, Ted. I also told you something else. I told you this would never be straightened out. But... That the very fact I've been arrested would scar me for the rest of my life. Ted, That there'll I... always be a nagging doubt in people's minds. Well, what can I expect from strangers when my own wife believes I'm guilty? Oh. Ted, I, I, I don't know what to believe. I'd know what to believe if you were the one who was sitting in jail. I believe what you told me. I'm trying to, but all the evidence... I wouldn't care for evidence. I'd know that the person I loved would tell me the truth. I don't think we have the kind of marriage that we thought we did, or at least that I thought I did. Ted, what do you want me to do? What do I want you to do if you have to ask? I'm, I'm all mixed up. We had a paradise, you and I, Mara. But at the first storm, look what happens to it. Darling, The other I... night you said to me this would be a good way to find out who my friends are. Well, it's better than that. It's a good way for me to find out who my wife is. Well, Mrs. Mallard, have you thought it over? Yes, Lieutenant Denson, I have. And have you decided to help your husband? Yes. I'm going to do everything I can. Fine. Then I can expect you to cooperate with us. Oh, I will. That is, if you agree to cooperate with me. Certainly. What would you like me to do? Find the man who's really guilty. Mrs. Mallard, is it possible we are back to ground zero on this thing? We never left it. Ted is innocent. In the face of all the evidence, can you really believe that? Yes, I believe he is innocent. And I believe it because he says so. Ted Mallard cannot lie to me any more than I can lie to him. Mrs. Mallard, I would like you... I know what you'd like. You'd like me to look at the facts. But there are all kinds of facts, Lieutenant. You have yours, and I have mine. And what are yours? Mine is the fact that Ted and I are in love. Yes, for a moment, I panicked. I was frightened. Mrs. Mallard... It's no good, Lieutenant. I have 25 years supporting me. I know this is a blow to your pride. Let me tell you whom you should investigate. My husband's partner, Bert Hollis... Please, Mrs. Bert Mallard. is lying. He said he didn't ask Ted to install the stereo set at 291 Fenimore. Mrs. Mallard, you can't shift the blame conveniently. Why is Bert lying? That's the crux of the entire case. Bert was not caught with the narcotics. Bert was not maintaining a girl in that apartment. Please, Lieutenant, don't give me facts. Your facts. For once, try something else. Something else? Faith. Believe somebody. Take a person's word. Y you once said, I was a very fine woman. All right. Would I lie? Isn't it possible that I'm telling the truth? I know you have a case. It it's well constructed. But it's wrong. Mrs. Mallard, we know Ted is guilty. And I know Bert is lying, and I'm asking you to find out why. But we have no reason to pursue that line of investigation. Perhaps you don't, but I do. And I'm going to pursue it. How? Oh. I don't know. What do I know about these kinds of things? But somebody has to help Ted. Hmm. Must be wonderful to have a wife who simply won't face the facts. Oh, you're wrong, Lieutenant. I'm facing all the facts. <laughs> Why would Bert lie? I don't know. Think. I told you, I don't know. Have you had any differences of opinion about the business? No. Is he in debt? Not that I know of. Can you think of anything, anything, any reason why he would do this to you? Bert and I have been friends since college. All right, the attache case. How could the cocaine have gotten in there? That's beyond me. Oh, Ted, you're not being very helpful. Well, did I ever think I'd be framed? It, it, it's Bert. It has to be Bert. But why? I don't know. I'd have been willing to bet my life on Bert. Just as I'd be willing to bet my life on you. Oh, hi, Mrs. Mallard. Hello, Harriet. Anything new with Mr. Mallard? <laughs> well, we're hoping. Yeah. I've just come by to get some of Ted's things. Oh, that's Mr. Hollis's ring. He wants to give me some dictation. Look, if you'll be in Mr. Mallard's office for a few minutes, 
W- would you mind answering the phone? No, not at all. It's just that when Mr. Hollis dictates, he gets all confused if I have to stop and pick up the phone. Well, I'll be here for a while. Oh, thanks. Yes? Is Bert there? Uh, no. Well, he's supposed to be there. He knows I'd be calling. Uh, uh, he just stepped out for a moment. Tell him Smitty wants him. Oh, uh, yes. What do you mean, oh, yes? Well, I- I've, um, I've heard Bert mention your name. Uh, Bert and I are, uh, well, we're, we're very close. There you are. What about the Saunders dame? Oh, that, that, that's all over. Look, it's a lot of dough, and it's due. He knows how and where to bring it. Oh. Myra, Harriet said you were here. Oh, well, I, uh, I, I just wanted to get some of Ted's things. Why, he'll be out of jail soon. I feel it in my bones. Do you? I know Ted. He couldn't do anything wrong. You're a good friend to him. I don't care what anyone says. I'll stick by him. Oh, thanks for covering the phone. I heard it ring. Oh, it, it, it was um, a wrong number. Oh, well, I hope everything will be okay with Mr. Mallard. Thank you, Harriet. If you're through in Mr. Mallard's office, maybe I'd better lock it. Well, why? Does Mr. Mallard usually keep it locked? Oh, no. That's his problem. He leaves everything lying around. Anybody could walk into his office and walk off with anything. Even... Even his attaché case? Oh, sure. Although, why would anyone want to take his attaché case? Well, did you ever see anyone carrying his case? Did I... Well, I, I never thought to watch. Try to think. Hey, now that you mention it, it's funny. Now, when he left for London last week, I saw Mr. Hollis bring him the case. And Mr. Hollis said, Hey, Ted, you left this in my office. Uh-huh. Th- that's what Mr. Hollis said. Mm-hmm. What did Mr. Mallard answer? I think he said, uh, uh, Thanks, Bert. And that was all? Yeah. Oh, okay. do you remember you asked me, did I know a uh, Jenny Saunders? Yes. Well, so that's where I heard her name. As they were saying goodbye, Mr. Hollis said, um, let me see, uh, did you get everything squared away for my friend, Jenny Saunders? And Mr. Mallard answered, uh, uh, the stereo works just fine. <laughs> there you are. You, you really forget nothing if, if you know how to make it come back. Hello, bud. I'm on time. You got it? Yeah. Hand it over. I know 50 grand here. I know. Look, the agreement was 10 payments, 50 grand each. 50 is too big a sum to hide. The agreement, pal. I can fix the books for 25 maybe each month, but not for 50. Who cares about the books? That's why we got Mallard out of the way. So you could have an open road. His wife was there today. Why? I don't know why. Maybe she suspects something. Why should she suspect I don't know. I said maybe. Look, you're the one who said all you needed was to get Mallard out of here and the till would be wide open. Okay, but you have to be cautious. Cautious? (laughs) The way you drop money on the ponies, the cards, the dames? Look, look, it'll just take a little bit longer, but I'll pay you fellas back. What's that? I don't know. Nobody's supposed to be here. Well, maybe it's Jenny. How could it be Jenny? I heard you two are quits. Quits? Where did you hear that? Your secretary told me. She doesn't know anything about Jenny. Wait a minute. Hey, what are you going to do with that gun? Somebody's in that closet. What are you trying to do, Bert? Set me up? No, no, I, I don't... All right, whoever you are, come on out of there. Myra. You know this name? It's Ted's wife. Hello, Bert. Who is your friend? Myra. I I couldn't help myself. So you did frame Ted after all. Please, Myra, you don't understand. It was Jenny. Jenny Saunders. I I, I couldn't keep away from her. All right, we can't hang around here. What are you going to do with her? I don't know. But something will occur to me. Move, sister. Why? What are you going to do to her? She has to disappear. You let her alone. Murder was no part of the deal. Look, bud, people do what they have to do. I said no. Please, please, Myra. If you promise not to... What can she promise? Myra, promise you... Oh, poor Bert. This 
this character makes you betray your friend, loot your company, and now he'll kill you. Shut up, lady. Well, how else can it end? I think we'd better go for a little ride. No, no, I, I won't let, let you go. Let go my arm, no, you no, nut. Put away, you. I said let go of my arm. You okay, Mr. Hollis? Me? Yes. Yes, I, I am. Lieutenant. Harry, Joe, get an ambulance. You may be able to save this other one's life. Lieutenant. What, what am I doing here? Yeah. Well, you can say whatever you like about science and facts and clues and evidence. But sometimes a good hunch has them all beat. You, you heard what they said? Yep, everything. I followed you because if you did happen to be right, you'd need help. I didn't mean to. I just... Well, I, I just kept getting in deeper and deeper. Thank you, Lieutenant. No. Thank you for showing me what it can be like. What... What can be like? Marriage. I may even try it myself. And uh, he did. Or so we are told. Well, what is the moral here? You may be sure that faith can overcome any difficulty. And as the Persian poet said, the sweet breath of love can blow away the mightiest mountains. So, you have faith, for I shall return in just a few moments. Love, like wine, they say, grows mellower, finer, tastier, as time goes on. Just as youth is wasted on the young, so is love. The heart has its reasons, and the more we attempt to probe and pry and weigh and analyze, the more we come to naught. Love is one of the two supreme passions. The other, of course, is murder. Which is why we always try to give you liberal amounts of each, seven times each week. Our cast included Joan Lovejoy, Mandel Kramer, Bryna Rayburn, Ken Harvey, and Sam Gray. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams...